And I just think when our life is about service, we, we there's a different vibe, right? It's it's like it's like working at a soup kitchen, right? When you volunteer to do something for someone else, you come out of there vibrating at a higher level than when you went in. And it's because there's something so beautiful and meaningful about doing something for someone else when you don't, when there's no, when there's no physical exchange, right? You're not getting something for doing it. It's, it's a, it's a vibrational exchange, right? You just feel better. And when I figured that out, when I understood that when I'm in the service of other people, not only do I raise my level of fulfillment and happiness and joy and all that sort of stuff, but I also um, put myself on a level where I can experience my highest level of performance, right? I be, I'm open more to a higher level of performance, to being my best self, right? Because I'm open to flow state, right? When we are in a state of joy, we access a flow state more easily. When we're, when we're in a state of fear or threat, which is what I was on the start line of that Olympic final, we shut that down. And unbeknownst to me at the time, but you know, I get it all now. But there was so much about my preparation for the Olympics that was counter to what I was trying to achieve. And, and I think, and I think that's a hard lesson for so many people when they realize, wow, for so many years I've been getting in my in my own way, and, and here I've been blaming others and blaming my parents or my education or my situation or no. <laughs> No, you, right? Have a look at you. Tell me, you know, now we're right on top of this topic of self-awareness. Right. Where do we go with self-awareness? It's so easy to see the flaws in others and then just start looking for evidence to back up what we see as the flaws in others. Totally. Um, and never turn the mirror on ourselves. Um I, there's a great interview that we just did yesterday that will probably be up by then, by the time this one comes out, um, with a Jonathan Domsky, where we talk about self-awareness um, and how important that is to kind of turn the mirror on yourself and how freeing it is. It it sounds hard. What do you what do you talk to people about ha- about self-awareness? Right, and you know, back to Ike, I, I just think I was so fortunate in hindsight because. I had this beautiful coach that I was living with all the time because he was embodying who and what I wanted to be, right? He was confident. He had self-respect. He loved his life. He loved others. You know, I wasn't much of that, right? Certainly the confidence piece. And so just watching Ike was a lesson in how to live life. And I know for some people, they're going to blow that off as, you know, sort of, come on, that's just West Coast flaky fluff. And, but there's so much about just watching a dog and how it, how it lives its life, how it shows up that we can learn from. And, and I guess I was in a situation where, you know, all of the tools and strategies that I had used throughout my life had, in the moment they needed to, to matter most had blown up. And so it was kind of like, okay, so what else is there? And when I started to look at how I had lived my life up into to that point, um, I started to become more open to the hard questions that I needed to ask. And, uh, and that's where the self-awareness muscle started to get flexed, right? And I've noticed the hard questions that I need to ask myself often come from the critique I have of others <laughs> uh, or the I critique I have of situations. Yeah. And now uh, because I, not because I'm particularly good at self-awareness, but because of all the insightful people I've interviewed on this podcast, so much of it comes back, you know, fresh ideas that are just waiting there for us to, you know, take up a new path and find all kinds of new landscapes to journey in. It starts with self-awareness. It just starts with asking questions about yourself and whether you've got the right map, mental maps, and whether you've got the right 
story about yourself and others. So there's a part in the book I want you to comment on because it relates to this. You were talking about a day that um, by this time in the book, I, I'm not going to give you away. It's a spoiler alert. I was just about to give a spoiler alert. But not. But you are, um, you have a Ike that, and he meets two other dogs. And um, they are a little out of control. And you say, Ike didn't try to match the bravado of those two dogs. Instead, he tried to diffuse the situation by being friendly and playful. But when those dogs crossed the line, he stood up for himself. And what it took to stand up for himself didn't come from his head or some thought or preparation of what being tough was. It came from deep inside him, from an inner knowing of what he was capable of. The strength and courage it took to defend himself came from his heart, not some tough guy showmanship. Jason paused and looked around at the other boys. So talk to us about what we the lesson we're to take from this beautiful, loving, playful dog, you know, finally or, or being in a situation where right. Had to, had... right. And I think that's where it sort of undoes the fluff comment, right? Is that this isn't just some um, unrealistic way of being, right? With, with with Ike, with dogs, Ike in particular in this case, you know, his his first choice in meeting a, a tough situation was to assume the best for the other people, right? The other dogs, and was to try to play and diffuse. But when that wasn't the intent of them, then there was a moment where he realized, okay, that's where, not where this is going, so I'm going to stand up for myself, and I have a line. And, but again, living below the shoulders, what, what was required in that moment of standing up for himself came from his, from who he was, right? Not some egoic I idea of who he should be, right? Some tough bravado, machismo kind of, kind of way, um, it was just his nature to be playful, but when it mattered, he was willing to stand up, right, and to do what was required. And I just think, you know, I was the opposite, right? I, I would come in to a situation with bravado and tough guy and thinking I need to appear as if I'm strong and able to take care of myself, when it should have been the other way, where I was uh, coming in more heart centered, right? More, more, more concerned about who I was as a person, not how I was showing up uh, on the surface. 